Hello everyone, welcome to Practically's Need Bio class and today we're going to learn about the morphology and anatomy of cockroach. Okay, so let's get started. Now, uh, we all know about cockroaches, okay, cockroaches in Indian households especially, is it we like filled with it, okay, be it smaller ones, the flying ones, the bigger ones, okay. So it's very scary. Sometimes you're very scared, especially when it starts flying. And they are not basically very harmful. Sometimes they actually spread diseases. That is true. But biting and all that does not happen. Actually. So uh, on a very funny note, okay, let's just start talking about cockroach. We'll be learning about the external and the internal features of cockroach. Okay, we'll be focusing on how cockroach reproduces, what are the digest, how are the digestive systems, the nervous systems and all. We'll also learn about the parts of its body, okay, the wings, the legs, the skin, etc. All the details we'll try to learn, okay. And you should also note that it's actually kind of important topic for NEAT also. All the three organisms we learn about, in the last class we were learning about earthworm, Today we are learning about cockroach. In the next class, we'll be learning about frogs. Okay, so all these three organisms are actually very important. Little little questions, they'll take little little names out of your NCRT book and just put direct questions on the neat question paper. Okay, so you have to pay attention. What are the parts? Name of the parts? How it happens? What it does? The functions, etc. Okay, so you have to do it. Okay, so. Let's get started and if you are, if you have any doubt, if you have any queries or anything, just let me know on the chat box. I keep checking the chat box, okay, slide and I'll try to clear it, okay. So first, I'll just say this that we are from Practically and this uh, app runs for classes 6 to 12 and we have a lot of features in it. We have a lot of videos, simulations, etc. We have special classes running also. You should definitely check it out. And apart from that, you can follow us on our socials on Instagram and Facebook. And do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our videos on YouTube. Okay. So, as we start. Okay. So, this part we know. Okay. Because we have learned it in the first few chapters. What cockroaches and the phylum, the class, the order family, these things we have a bit idea about, okay. So, we know that cockroach is from the phylum arthropoda, it's an arthropod, okay. And then class insecta, it's an insect, okay. Order is Dictyoptera, family is Blattidae, genus and species, genus is Periplaneta and species is American. So, its name is, its scientific name is Periplaneta. Americana. Okay. So, this is the name. And in India, other kinds of uh, cockroaches, there are a number of kinds of cockroaches. Okay. It's been there from when the humanity started. Before that, also we had cockroaches. Okay. So, cockroaches have been, have been living in our world way before than us. So, there are a number of cockroaches species. Then, Blata orientalis and Blatter germanica is found in India. These are the two main uh, species which are found in India, okay. So, we will start with the morphology. First, we will discuss about the morphology and then we will discuss about the anatomy, okay. So, the body we all know that it is a reddish brown color insect. It's very, sometimes we feel very yucky when we see it, okay. So, and it's the body of cockroach is elongated and segmented. It has segments. Basically, it has three segments, okay, and it is quite elongated. And their size actually ranges from one fourth inch to three inches, okay. So, it can grow very big. It will start small, but it will grow very big. And have long antenna, legs, flat extension of the upper body wall that conceals the head. Okay, so it has antenna, we know that it has an antenna, two antenna, okay, and it has legs, around six legs they have, three on the left side, three on the right, and they have a flat extension of the upper body that conceals the head. They are nocturnal omnivores, 
so nocturnal as in they are seen at night they are active at night so when you switch off all the lights and go to sleep suddenly you go one day on in your kitchen okay especially in the kitchen and you switch it on the light you will see n number of cockroaches there even if you clean every day we live in especially in my house i have seen since i live in ground floor there are so many cockroaches every day we clean still the cockroaches come they are very uh creatures they are very special creatures if i may say and they are found only at night you can see them even during the day sometimes but mostly at night and they live in damp places throughout the world okay so they especially they want to live in damp places damp and dark places so the exoskeleton they have an exoskeleton the outer most thing is thick and made up of calcareous plates called sclerites okay so they have a thick outer skin okay that is calcareous and it is known as sclerites and there are around 10 segments in the dorsal view it is known as tergites and in the ventral view it is known as sternites okay so there is tergum or sternum or tergites or sternites you can call it tergum also okay tergum sternites are also called sternum okay so the exoskeleton is coated with wax impermeable to water so the water it's because it is kind of waxy in nature the exoskeleton is waxy in nature the water does not actually cross that barrier okay it protects the body from loss of water and provides rigidity and surface for attachment of the body so it's quite like it provides rigidity doesn't the water does not pass through any way outer or inner so it provides rigidity it is basically for protection and moving around okay the adjacent segments are joined by thin soft flexible arthroidal membrane so the outer membrane is the arthroidal membrane okay arthroidal as an arthropod so arthroidal membrane the segments are covered by this kind of membrane okay so let me check okay there is sagar hi sagar welcome to the class i'm happy that you joined if you have any doubts just let me know okay so next is the what kinds of like how is the body as i said that the body is divided into three parts so what are those three parts they are head thorax and abdomen okay so there is head the thorax part okay and the lower thorax which is the abdomen now thorax in itself is actually divided into three parts okay that is prothorax mesothorax and metathorax so the head is connected with the thorax by short extension of the prothorax known as the neck so three segments head thorax abdomen now again in thorax there are three segments there is prothorax that is on the top the mesothorax in the middle and the metathorax at the end prothorax as you know it's in the top so with the help of the neck it is attached with the head okay the cockroach has three pairs of jointed appendages and two pairs of wings as in they have three pairs of legs as i said just now i said three on the right three or three on the right three on the left okay and two pairs of wings uh short one and in the back a longer one okay so the four wings are mesothoracic and are called wing covers or tegmina or elytra so four wings are mesothoracic as in they are connected to the mesothorax okay they cover the hind wings and are protective in function these are dark stiff and opaque leathery so the four wing actually covers the hind wing okay when you actually see a a cockroach flying okay you can actually see that after only the four wing comes out after that only the hind wing comes out because the four wing actually covers the hind wings 
Now the hind wings are large, thin, membranous. This is more thinner. Since it's larger, it is more thin, membranous, and transparent in nature. This is transparent in nature. That one was opaque and leathery. This is membranous and transparent. They are kept folded below the tegmina and are used for flying. So it is the hind wings mainly. Hind wings are mainly used for flying. Okay. So now we will start with the different parts of the body. Okay. First we will start off with the head. Okay. Now the head basically con consists of the mouth parts. First we will talk about the mouth parts. Then we will talk about the eye and everything. Okay. So ventrally an opening called mouth is present on the head that remains surrounded by the mouth parts. So it has a mouth. Okay. Now with that mouth comes a lot of parts. Okay. Different, different parts. Okay. Now what it has pair of mandibles, first maxillae, labium or second maxillae, hypopharynx and labrum. So there are four or five parts around the mouth which actually helps in the eating, chewing, etc. Lot of things, okay, which actually works with the intake of the food. Okay, not only the mouth, around the mouth there are some parts. So the mouth parts of the cockroach help in biting and chewing of its food. So it's kind of a system. Okay, the mouth parts are actually kind of a system which takes the food and helps with the chewing and biting. Okay, not only the mouth, the parts are also involved in the process. So what are those parts? The first is labrum. Okay, so it is the broad flattened terminal sclerite of the dorsal side of head capsule and it acts as an upper lip. See, we have an upper lip, right? So labrum is the upper lip in the case of cockroach. Okay, then there is mandibles. Okay. These are thick, hard and triangular appendages beneath the labrum on each lateral side of the mouth which bear pointed teeth like process called denticles. Okay, so mandibles have the denticles, teeth like structure called the denticles. Now first maxillae located on each side of the mouth next to mandibles for cutting and chewing. They also bear the olfactory receptor smelling thing they have and the first maxillae actually helps in cutting and chewing okay now labium this is also known as the second maxillae are fused together forming a single structure which covers the mouth from the ventral side so here you can see dorsal side say the labrum is actually covering it okay from the ventral side it's the labium okay so labrum covers from the dorsal side and labium covers from the ventral side okay and it bears tactical and gustatory sensory we have some sensory organs also finally they have hypopharynx it is a small cylindrical mouth part sandwiched between first maxillae and covered by labrum and labium on the dorsal and ventral sides respectively. It bears the several sensory setae on the free end and the opening of common salivary duct. So what it does, it is covered by the labrum and the labium. Okay, it's hypopharynx. Pharynx does what the passing of food and everything, right? That happens in humans. We pass the food through the pharynx. So this is also some kind of that kind of function only that the, as the it's covered by the labrum and the labium and has a lot of sensory city as in has a lot of sensory organs okay and uh, at the opening of common salivary duct also has the salivary duct also which helps in the chewing and the processing of food so this is how the different these are how the different parts look okay so you might have noticed how the mouth looks in cockroach okay you notice it very 
minutely if you notice it this is how actually the whole thing looks okay so this is the labium there is the maxillary pulp and everything okay this is the mandible the labrum okay and the hypopharynx which has the salivary gland okay so this is how the whole thing looks see if you see it from the other side if you see as it as a whole this is how the mouth of the cockroach might look to you okay the other thing in the the most important thing actually in the head of the cockroach is the compound eye okay compound eye is also found in house flies as well you might know okay so compound eyes is what they they don't have one we have two eyes okay in the case of thing insects like house flies cockroaches they have n number of eyes okay on both the side they have n number of eyes okay so why is it like that let's find it out so the compound eyes are situated at the dorsal surface of the head upper surface of the head okay each eye consists of about 2000 hexagonal omatidia okay so these units of eyes are known as omatidia and they have around 2000 of them it's hexagonal in shape and they have around 2000 okay with the help of several omatidia a cockroach can receive several images of an object so it is like they have n number of eyes and they have each omatidia or each unit will capture the image okay so they see one thing they can see a lot of images okay so this kind of vision is known as mosaic vision with more sensitivity but less resolution so the sensitivity is more okay they can sense it more but the resolution is less it won't look like it might look blurry for them okay and this kind of thing is actually common during night but that is because they have nocturnal vision okay this is actually helpful they don't want since it's night they don't want to have proper resolution images and all okay they just want to know where they are going if they are going safely where the food is etc that much only they need okay and this is quite proper in case of nocturnal animals such as uh cockroaches so they have proper sensory things okay sensitivity is there properly but the resolution is not that great but it is not required also because they are running around in the night they don't need that resolution so this is how the eyes look now comes the leg okay so now a cockroach's thorax attaches three pairs of legs just now i said okay so each three pairs of legs is named after the region of the thorax to which it attaches okay so prothorax metathorax uh, mesothorax and metathorax okay so accordingly the legs are also named so the prothoracic legs are the closest to the cockroach's head prothorax as i said prothorax mesothorax metathorax okay these are shortest legs and they act like brakes when the cockroach runs so they have a braking function okay the middle legs are mesothoracic as in they are attached to the mesothorax okay they move back and forth to either speed the roach up or slow it down so this is used in acceleration or deceleration okay so this is braking this is acceleration or deceleration and the very long metathoracic legs are the cockroach's back legs they move the cockroach forward this is the speed thing or the uh, moving thing this is basically used for the moving so this is how the three legs okay in three different parts of the body have three different functions see how like it has been made the how the cockroach's body is such a small thing but properly it is being designed first leg does something second leg second pair of legs does something third pair of legs does something okay so 
these three pair of legs are substantially different in lengths and functions, but they have the same parts and move the same way. Okay, so they have the same parts and move the same way, but their function is different. Okay, so the upper portion of the leg called the coxa attaches the leg to the thorax. So there is a coxa here you can see. So this is what attaches the legs to the thorax region. Okay. Now the trochanter acts like a knee and lets the cockroach bend its leg. So here is the trochanter. Okay. This is like a joint kind of a thing. Okay. Which actually helps in the movement. Okay. There is the femur and the tibia that resemble thigh and shin bones. We have Okay, thigh and shin bones, right? So, they also have femur and tibia. So, this is the femur and this is the tibia. Segmented tarsus acts like an ankle and foot. So, this is like the ankle and foot. Okay, and they also, this tarsus thing also helps in the climbing and everything. That kind of function also is done by this thing. Because it's a foot, it will just try to walk on it. Okay. So, this is how the tarsus works. Okay. So, let me check. Is anybody? Okay. Now, we'll discuss about the abdominal segments. So, the abdomen is in both males and females consists of 10 segments okay it's kind of different in males and females they have different parts okay so in the males the seventh sternum is boat shaped and together with the eighth and ninth sternum forms a brood or genital pouch okay whose anterior part contains the female gonopore spermatical pores and collateral glands so the okay so this is the Okay, I lost my cursor. Okay, so this is how the female part looks, abdomen looks. Okay, so it is kind of boat shaped, and at the sternum, it has a pouch kind of a thing, okay, which contains the gonopores, spermatical pores, etc. Okay, and this is how the male abdomen looks. Okay. So, this is the dorsal view, this is the ventral view and there are some different things over here. So, what is it? The genital pouch or the chamber lies at the hind end of the abdomen bound dorsally by 9th and 10th turga ventrally and by the 9th sternum. Okay, so this is at the 9th position. There it started in the 7th position. Okay, here it is at the 9th position. And it also contains dorsal anus, ventral genital pore, gonopyroxis and everything. And they have an extra thing called the anal style. Okay. So, anal circus is actually there in both female and male both have anal circus. But the anal style is only present in Made. That is one of the most distinguished things you can actually find out if a cockroach is male or female, you can actually find out with the help of anal stripe. If it's there, then it's male. If it's not there, it's female. Okay. So, this is how you can actually find out if the cockroach you have around you is male. Okay. So, now we'll start with the anatomy. First, we'll discuss with the digestive system, one of the most important parts in the body. Okay. And I wanted to show you this picture. If you want to open it up, this is how the thing looks. This picture, if you can see, this is when you open it up, you can actually see the whole parts and everything. You can actually see the digestive view and all the parts properly. Okay. Now, so, so the elementary canal is long and somewhat coiled divisible into three main parts foregut, midgut and hindgut. 
So gut basically means the stomach or the digestive system. So they are they are divided in cockroaches. They are divided into three parts. There is foregut, midgut, and hindgut. Foregut is the stomatidium. Okay, is differentiated into five parts: buccal chamber, pharynx, esophagus, crop, and gizzard. So this is the foregut, the initial structure. Now gizzard is muscular and internally provided with six cuticle teeth, which crushes the food. See, we have discussed about gizzard in a lot of things. We discussed about gizzard in earthworm also. What gizzard does is, in earthworms we saw they did not have teeth, and it was difficult for them to chew on soil or anything, whatever they were eating. So gizzard does the chewing thing. The hard work is done by gizzard. Here also, okay, they have a gizzard. They have it present, and which has specialized teeth. Okay, six cuticle teeth, which crushes its food. Okay, so the stomodial valve is present between the gizzard and the mesenteron. So what is the mesenteron? Mesenteron is basically the midgut. So this was what this was the foregut. Okay, now the midgut or the mesenteron is short tubular lined with glandular endoderm. So they have glands around them. Okay, so they have glandular endoderm. They have glands. And the anterior end of the mesenteron, there are eight blind glandular hepatic cacae, which secrete digestive enzymes. Glands will, of course, they'll be secreting something. So, so they do secrete digestive enzymes. And the gland that is done by the hepatic cacae, glandular hepatic. Ka or KK. Okay, so hepatic KK is a part of the digestive system. Now, hindgut, we learned about the uh, up uh, the other two guts. This is the hindgut or the proctodium, comprises of ileum, colon, and rectum, the intestinal parts and everything they have in the hindgut. The wall of rectum provided with six rectal papillae. They help in the absorption of water and salts. So the rectum help in the absorption of water and salts. Now cockroach is omnivorous, feeds on all sorts of organic and inorganic debris. Okay, so the digestive enzymes of saliva are mainly zymase and amylase. They have to digest, right? The enzymes which actually help in digestion are the Zymase and amylase. Okay, most of the nutrients of food are digested in the crop. So the food nutrients of food food are digested in a part called crop. Absorption of digested food takes place in the mesenteron. So the absorption things actually takes place in the midgut. Okay, so each part of the gut have their own functions. Okay, one is taking, one is absorbing. Okay, one helps in absorption, one helps in excretion, etc. So each of the part of the guts have their own functions. Now we'll talk about the nervous system. Okay, so now the nervous system of cockroach consists of series of Fused, segmentally arranged ganglia joined by paired longitudinal connectives on the ventral side. Okay, three ganglia lie in the thorax and the six or six in the abdomen. So it is all around the body. The nervous system has been there all around the body, and they have ganglia. That is the unit of the nervous system here, and. They have six paired longitudinal connectives on there. There are three ganglia line the thorax. Okay, they don't have it in the head. So there are three in the thorax, the upper body portion, and lower body, we have six. Okay, so the nervous system of the cockroach is spread throughout the body and it consists, consists of three different kinds of nervous system. There is the central nervous system, okay, there's the peripheral nervous system and the sympathetic or the visceral nervous system. Okay, so main thing is the 
central nervous system it consists of brain or supra esophageal ganglion so this kind of a small kind of a thing brain is also known as the supra esophageal ganglion that is the unit okay now brain gives off a pair of short stout cords uh, the circums esophageal connectives that encircle the esophages and pass down the backwards over sub esophageal ganglion so it gives out cords okay here you can see it gives out cords and it encircles the esophagus and it is passed back okay now from the sub esophageal ganglion passes backwards into the thorax and double vent ventral nerve cord which bears three ganglia in the thorax and six in the abdomen so what happens they just encircle here okay so this is the prothoracic ganglia mesothoracic and the metathoracic there are three after that they come into the abdominal okay where are, there are six okay now there is the peripheral nervous system it consists of nerves which are given off from the ganglia so as to innervate all parts of the body so ganglia is the main thing okay Six, three. First, there is three. Then there is six. Okay, and from there, the other parts of the body gets connected with the help of the peripheral nervous system. This is connection with the different parts of the body. Okay, and finally, the sympathetic or the stomatogastric visceral nervous system consists of a frontal ganglion, which is situated on the dorsal side of the esophagus in the head. Okay. from this the ganglion a median unpaired recurrent nerve reaches the visceral ganglion situated on the crop various nerve branches are given from the visceral ganglion so there is a visceral ganglion okay which actually now various branches are given from them to connect with the whole body okay and the frontal ganglion is joined with the central nervous system by nerves which connect the circumo esophageal commissure so the whole thing is actually joined finally with again the central nervous system okay so there is a main thing visceral ganglion reaches out and then again it goes back to the central nervous system the circulatory system now we all know that the body of cockroach we have read about it in the previous classes also that cockroach is an open body open open system okay so it's not closed type the circulation is open where the blood is just flushed in the body and it reaches the organs directly there are no lot of capillaries and everything there are but it's like not there it's directly the blood nourishes the organs okay so the blood vascular system is open and lacunar type okay it's open and like you know right body cavity contains blood which bathes viscera in, in in it therefore known as hemocele okay so the blood is basically known as the hemocele so visceral organs located in the hemocele okay are bathed in blood that is the hemolymph so the area that area that cavity is known as hemocele and the blood is known as the hemolymph okay now the hemolymph is composed of colorless plasma and hemocytes okay it's composed of colorless plasma and hemocytes that is the blood okay now heart of the cockroach consists of elongated muscular tube lying along the mid dorsal line of the thorax and abdomen so it is an elongated we are we sub, we always consider the heart as a lump type of organ or something here the heart is actually elongated muscular type okay and it is on the mid dorsal line it's in some in the middle okay on the thorax and the abdomen not on the head the rest of the body has it the elongated structure through the thorax and abdomen so the heart is 
long and muscular tube okay it is differentiated into funnel shaped chambers with ostia on its either side okay blood from the sinuses enter heart through the ostia and is pumped anteriorly to the sinuses again so what happens the blood there is something called there are pores kind of chambers kind which has pores kind of thing which is ostia from there the blood enters okay and then from there only it goes off to the sinuses again like different parts of the body okay now comes the respiratory system let me check who is there hi puneet welcome to practically this class okay so respiratory system till now we have read about the nervous system the uh, the respiratory uh, in the circulatory system the digestive system now we learn about the respiratory system okay so the respiratory system consists of a network of trachea so there is a network of trachea that open through 10 pairs of small holes called spiracles present on the lateral side of the body so on the lateral side of the body there are okay there are trachea network of trachea here you can see a network of it okay so this is the trachea and there are pairs of small holes that are known as the spiracles okay thin branching tubes that is the tracheal tube subdivides into tracheoles now the whole thing is the trachea they are divided into tracheoles which carry oxygen from the air to all the parts so the unit major unit is trachea from there you get tracheoles which actually makes the carries the oxygen carries oxygen to all parts of the body it's throughout the body right it is there in the uh, thora uh, thorax and the abdomen everywhere okay so all parts of body okay the opening of the spiracles is regulated by the sphincters the muscle called sphincter and the spiracular opening closing depends on it exchange of gases takes place at place at tracheoles by diffusion so since tracheoles are the minor units major units the tra major one is the trachea the tracheoles are the minor units so the gas exchange takes place in this part okay it's all over the body trachea is all over the body they have spiracles also openings called spiracles and they have the tracheoles from where the gases exchange so this is how the respiration works in a cockroach now the excretory system so the excretory system when we think about our excretory system we think about kidneys here it is done by something called malpighian tubules very important for me this question actually comes a lot that cockroach has the excretory system called the malpighian tubules okay now each tubule is lined by glandular and ciliated cells they absorb the nitrogenous exchange waste products and convert them into uric acid which is excreted out through the hind gut therefore this insect is called uricotelic so what happens they have in this tubule they have glandular cells okay cilia hair like structures are there in the cells okay so they absorb the nitrogenous products and they convert them into uric acid okay which is then they eject it out from the hind gut okay that is why it is called uricotelic okay in addition there are also fat body nephrocytes uricos glands these also help in excretion so apart from malpighian tubules they have the fat body nephrocytes and uricos glands which help in the excretion of the waste products okay now comes the most important part the reproductive system we'll talk first talk about the reproductive system in the male okay 
Now, then we'll talk about the reproductive system in the female and then we'll talk about the fertilization, okay. So, the male reproductive system consists of pair of testes, one lying on each lateral side in the fourth and the sixth abdominal segments. Okay, it's in the abdominal segment below, okay, fourth and the sixth segment and there is, there are two testes, one pair that is two on each side, okay. So, from each testis arises a thin vas deferens which opens into ejaculatory duct, duct through seminal vesicle. So, testis it arises from vas deferens, okay, which opens into ejaculatory duct through seminal vesicle. Now, the ejaculatory duct opens into male gonophore situated ventral to the anus. See, this is the vas deferens, okay. There is the seminal, seminal vesicle, okay, and it opens into the, the ejaculatory duct, opens into the male gonophore situated ventral to the anus here, okay. Now, the characteristic mushroom shaped gland is present in the sixth and the seventh segments, which functions as an accessory reproductive gland, okay. So, there is a gland here. Okay, now which acts as an accessory based gland, okay. And the external genitalia are represented by the male gonophobiasis or phallomere, okay. So, they have the, the external one, these are all mostly internal. So, they have to fertilize with the help of external, right. So, that is known as the phallomere here you can see, the right phallomere change the color maybe then it will be visible. So, it is available here. Okay. So, chitinous and asymmetric structure around the male gonophore that is the external genitalia. Now, the sperms are basically stored in the seminal vesicle and are glued together in the form of bundles called spermatophores which are discharged. Now, the sperms are in the seminal vesicle and they are grouped together and they are ejected out, okay, called spermatophores and they are ejected out during the, from here they are ejected out during the copulation, okay. That is the male system. Now, the female system is a bit different, of course, it is a bit different. The female reproductive system consists of two large ovaries. There was testis. This one has ovaries lying laterally in the second to the sixth abdominal segments in the lateral portion is in the sixth to second to the sixth segment. Each ovary is formed of a group of eight ovarian tubules or ovarioles containing a chain of the developing ova. So, the ovaries are form, formed of tubules, tube-like structures called the ovarioles, okay. These produce the ova. Now, oviducts of each ovary, second, okay, I lost my cursor again, okay, here it is. So, oviducts of each ovary unite into a single median oviduct also called the vagina. Okay, so the oviducts of each ovary unite into a single median called the oviduct. From the oviduct, okay, they unite into a single oviduct, okay, that is also called the vagina, which opens into the genital chamber. That is the opening to the genital chamber. Now, there is also another called pair of spermatheca is present in the sixth segment which opens into the general, general chamber. So, they have another opening called a spermatheca which is also opening into the German general chamber. Now, we will learn why there is a spermatheca. Okay. So, during copulation what happens when they are mating, during mating, okay, the spermatophore that was in the male, okay, is transferred into the genital pouch of the female where it 
जो ओपनिंग लाइज इन क्लोज कॉन्टैक्ट विद द स्पर्मेटिकल ओपनिंग सो ड्यूरिंग द स्पर्मेटो फोर्स आर लाइक रीच समवेयर अराउंड द स्पर्मेटिकल ओपनिंग सो दैट द स्पर्म्स लीव द स्पर्मेटो फोर टू एंटर द स्पर्मेटिका सो वॉट हैपन्स द स्पर्मेटो फोर इज अ यूनिट राइट देर आर स्पर्म्स इन साइड so it reaches somewhere around the spermatical opening in the females okay as just now we read spermatical opening is in the females so the spermatophore reaches around the spermatical opening from there the spermatophore is ejected out the sperms okay reach the spermatical opening then the fertilization takes place within the vestibulum of the female genital pouch okay after that the fertilization takes place in the vestibulum of the genital pouch their collateral glands pour their secretions over the inner surface of the vestibulum to form utheka so they form okay the secretions and everything they help in the vestibulum and they form something called utheka okay so 16 eggs are laid into a single utheka okay so it is there are eggs inside it's a unit where the eggs are present okay there are 16 eggs inside the utheka the eggs are arranged in a double row assisted by ovipositor valves so it will be like this it will be like this there are 16 8 8 1 2 3 4 like that it will be placed with the help of ov positor pulps the sperm stored in the spermatheca fertilize the eggs when they pass from the vagina into the vestibulum for inclusion in the utheca so the eggs okay when they are passing into the vestibulum that time only the fertilization happens okay because the sperm have entered in the spermatical opening through the spermatical opening they find the eggs traveling towards the vestibulum okay and the fertilization happens and the utheka is formed which has the eggs now the female cockroach carries this utheka okay one utheka has 16 eggs so the female one female one it carries the utheka protruding from the tip of the abdomen for several days till it is deposited in a warm shelter dark place so they'll be carrying it the female cockroach will be carrying the utheka for a long day long time till they find a safe place to deposit it okay now the utheka which is laid at a suitable place by the female co cockroach contains the fertilized eggs one utheka has 16 eggs now after that after it is there after it is put in a safe place then the hatching occurs the dorsal keel of the utheka splits a part of it splits and the nymphs emerge out leaving the egg membranes within the utheka so the nymphs are the baby cockroaches which emerges out from the utheka okay so the freshly hatched nymphs are delicate transparent almost colorless creatures with black eyes they are very small and delicate and transparent in nature they just have black eyes they possess nearly all adult characters but differ in size coloration sexually immature and lack wings so what happens they leave the utheka okay these are the babies are known as nymphs okay they are very small they have most of the characters but they are not sexually active or they do not have wings okay they grow by the time they grow slowly they start getting these characters but while they are born while they are nymphs they are very small they are transparent in nature and they have two eyes you can actually find in this diagram okay so the fertilization occurs and the they they carry the cockroach carries the utheka okay this is how the utheka looks it has eggs okay from there the nymphs go out and finally they grow okay so this is kind of a life cycle
okay so this is kind of a life cycle of the cockroach okay so i hope that you have gained some kind of idea for cockroach and if you have any doubts please do ask us okay and we just try to answer some questions and then we can leave for today okay okay so gizzard has thicker inner cuticle forming six highly chitinous plate okay just now we had gizzard is in the elementary canal okay they have a thin inner cuticle and have the chitinous plate inside what is it called okay it's called as teeth okay so that chitinous plate has six teeth okay which of the following is present only in male cockroach labium inal style inal cerci filiform antenna okay the answer is inal style inal cerci is actually there in both females and males okay inal style is the one which is not there in any in the female cockroach which of the following statement is not correct is incorrect about cockroach heart tubular muscular ventrally placed consists of three chambers okay so it is tubular okay it is actually muscular do we know if it's ventrally placed consists of 13 chamber so let's check so it's not ventrally placed it is dorsally placed okay which of the following is not following is not helping in excretion okay hepatic cava nephrocytes uricose glands fat body nephrocytes help uricose glands help fat body help the main organ is malpighian tubule okay they also help the hepatic cava is a part of the digestive system okay so it is hepatic cava okay thank you everyone for joining today i hope you learned something or if not everything at least something you learn you can always go back to the videos and see what is happening and how it is happening you can also ask us questions don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel okay thank you everyone good night bye bye